victory. The Lancers are heading to the title game in the Big South Basketball Championship. Welcome once again to the Coach's Corner with Head Coach Bill Reinson. I'm your host, Scott Bacon. We appreciate you joining us for our first installment of the 2013-14 campaign. Coach, first of all, appreciate you taking the time again and, and looking forward to sitting down and chatting throughout the season. This is my favorite time of the week, Scott. We'll be here every morning, on, uh, every Monday morning, ready to go. Well, now, you guys have five conference games under your belt, but... I wanted to go back for our viewers to the non-conference part of the schedule and a huge win that you guys picked up over Xavier, a Big East opponent, and arguably the biggest win in your program's history. Yeah, I would, I would agree it would be the biggest win in our history. It, it does seem like quite a while ago. We've, uh, we've struggled a little bit since then, but it was a special night. Um, we were playing without one of our starters, Raven Williams, but uh, the other ladies really stepped up. Heather Tobeck had an outstanding game, Deja Brown. Had an outstanding game. Deborah Hedden stepped up, and uh, it was one that we'll remember for a while. You know, I wanted to touch on Heather Tobeck, and we're going to talk about individuals as we move forward, but she's got a really unique story, and I'll let you tell it, but she ended up hitting the biggest shot in that big win over Xavier. She did. She did. Heather played for us a couple of years ago. Um, she, had a, uh, she had a child last year and didn't play, and then came back this year to, to resume her studies and resume her, her basketball playing career. But uh, she's a talented six foot four inch girl who can shoot a three pointer. And uh, when we needed a bucket late in that game, we knew we could go to her. And, uh, and she made the three pointer that put us ahead to stay. All time leader in block shots. As Already well. all time leader in block shots. She's got uh, 19 or so more games to go. <laughs> well, and you touched on not having a starter in that game. Raven Williams missed that contest. That's been a pretty familiar theme for your team this year, missing some of the, the parts and pieces of your team throughout the season. Yeah, it, it's something that happens every year. It happened a little bit last year also, but uh, it gives the other girls a chance to get some experience. And we have had a couple players step up. Uh, Heather would be one. Uh, Brenna Robbins has played really well also. And Deborah Hedden has really taken advantage of the opportunity to play. Well, five games, as we mentioned now, in Big South Conference action. You started the year in conference play 0-3 playing a bit shorthanded. Take us back to that point in the season for you. You've already lost four seniors from last year, 70% of your offense from a season ago. Of course, a, a team that went to the Big South Conference Championship, but was your confidence or the team's confidence wavering at all when you started conference play winless this year? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, similar to last year, I think everybody understood uh, the value of the players who weren't in the lineup. And although we battled and we did get some good experience, it's, uh, it's good to have them back now. We'll kind of acclimate them to what we're doing and, and get back to where we were at the beginning of the year. We started the season 3-1, and one, so we were playing pretty well before the injuries all hit. Now last year you started conference play red hot, 6-1, and one, and of course had that a bit of a bump throughout the middle of the season and came back and finished strong in the postseason. And we touched on some of the leadership that you've lost with four seniors leaving. Was that helpful to have players like Daisha Brown and Raven Williams and Khalila Ali who were a part of that rotation last year and had gone through a year in the Big South Conference to help the team through the early bumps in Big South Conference play? Yeah, I, I really think it was. Uh, we had four outstanding seniors last year, and I think the one thing that they proved throughout the season was their resiliency. And I think you learn from watching other players and how other players respond. And uh, Deja and Raven and Kalila, they all learn, I think, that it's, it's not the end of the world when somebody goes out. You've got other people who can step up and still compete in, you know, with, within the conference or outside the conference. You know, one of the things I've noticed in watching the team this year is how surprising it is at times how similar this year's team looks to last when they're playing well, despite the fact that you've got four senior starters that have departed. Yeah, we, we, we like to play the same tempo. We like to get the ball and, and run it down the court, pressure defensively, and we've been able to do that uh, with this year's group as well. Uh, when we're healthy, we do it very well. Uh, we struggled a little bit during that eight-game losing streak. 
but it's one of those situations where they'll get better every week. You know, having sophomores and freshmen, they have so much room to learn and so much room to get better. Last year, we kind of knew what we had. This year, by the end of the season, we may look like a completely different team than we do now. Hmm. Well, and we talked on the 0-3 starting conference play, but now winners of your last two, a pair of road victories at Presbyterian and at Charleston Southern. Take us back through those games, that road trip down south, and how much that meant for your team. I think it was important. It's always important to get away. I, I think you bond as a team when you travel. Uh, there were two winnable games. We played against uh, good opponents. Presbyterian's always tough. They always play defense. Um, they're very structured and very well coached. Uh, we were lucky to get out of there with a three-point win. But yeah, what that allowed... 46-43. Well, yeah. That was, uh, it was a barn burner. <laughs> um, but uh, when we played down there, we got the chance to get uh, Deja Brown a little bit of playing time. She wasn't real good at Presbyterian, but she got on the court and kind of got back into the flow. Raven Williams played well that night, and, and once we snuck out of there with a the win, um, Deja came back on Saturday night and scored 29 points, and hopefully that's a sign of things to come for the rest of the season. A win over Charleston Southern, a 2-0 and road trip down south, and... That was a game, both those games, Daisha came up off the bench, and we talked about the missing pieces and the different starting lineups you've seen so far this year, and really there hasn't been a consistent starting five thus far. No, no, not at all. And I, I kind of like bringing, bringing Day Day off the bench. She, uh, she does a real good job. She adds some energy to the lineup. And I think it's also rewarding Deborah Hedden for the job that she did while Day Day was out. She really stepped to the forefront and led us in scoring a couple of times, and by rewarding her, putting in a starting lineup, and bringing Day Day off the bench, I think we get the best of both worlds. You've talked about how this team will look so different at the end of the year, potentially, than it does now. So when you look at that starting five, or even expanding that into the rotation that you use, it seems like it's still something that you're figuring out as the season goes. Yeah, I thought we had it, I thought we had it taken care of at the beginning of the year, but then we had the players go down, and again, surprising players step up. I think we'll be a little bit deeper than we were last year. And I think all of the freshmen and sophomores that we have will have just so much room for improvement. Uh, Raven Williams has been playing great, but I think she has room for improvement offensively. Uh, Heather Tobeck is just now rounding into shape. She's had two or three outstanding games and then a couple not so good. So I think her consistency is going to come along as well. Yeah, that's that cliche you hear from us broadcasters too when players go down other players step up and now they've got that invaluable experience for when you guys get deeper into conference play and into the postseason. Yeah, absolutely. And we were, we were kind of fortunate for that to happen early. Well, and I wanted to touch on your newbies, too. Talking with head coach Bill Reinson here on the Coach's Corner on LawnwoodLancers.com. You've got three new players this year and Heather returning, of course. But touch on those freshmen and what their contribution has been thus far. Well, I mean, we, we wouldn't have been able to compete without them when we had the injuries. Uh, we'll start with Treasure Avery. She's a freshman point guard. Uh, she struggled a little bit early, but as freshman point guards will, trying to understand the game. Her effort's been there. Her intensity's been there. Uh, she was our leading scorer, I believe, she at least in the first half against Eastern Kentucky. She played very, very well in that game. Uh, Brenna Robbins has been solid for us all year. She's going to be a player who will defend, will rebound, will make an open shot. She handles the ball well and has a terrific basketball IQ. And then Emily Nyland has just shown glimpses of how good she can be. She's six foot five. She's very long. When she shoots the ball, it goes in the basket. Um, defensively, she kind of alters shots in there, and she's been a good rebounder for us. So we're bringing them along slowly. Uh, Brenna probably a little bit quicker than everyone else because she's adapted uh, a little bit better. But uh, I think they're going to be very important parts of what we're doing come conference uh, tournament time. Well, and Emily now has moved into the starting lineup for you guys, and, and as you said, has, has seen some valuable minutes and is still figuring out her role with the team. And I wanted you to touch on her in the recruiting process, too, and kind of what sort of athletes you're looking for and what your situation is here at Longwood, because she was getting some looks from some very high major schools, but found her way here to Longwood. Yeah, un well, unfortunately for her, fortunately for us, she suffered an injury the summer before her senior year. So she didn't play a lot her senior year in high school. Uh, I had seen her play prior to that in a, in a spring tournament. And I thought she had a chance to be very, very good. But I didn't think she'd come all the way from Illinois to Farmville. Uh, turns out that her recruiting kind of fell off and she was open to the idea. We had the major that she wanted to study. And it really came together pretty quickly. Uh, we kind of hit it off on the phone. We had what she wanted and uh, we were looking to add some size with some upside potential. And it was a, it was a really good match. Well, what about expanding upon that into your recruiting philosophy? 
Are you looking for some of those gems that fall through the cracks? Are you looking for more of a, a hidden gem that other folks haven't gotten a chance to see? Or, or is it just a little bit of everything? How would you explain your philosophy as far as recruiting goes? I, I think it's a little bit of everything, dependent upon the class. Um, last year, we had a lot of athleticism, lacked a little bit in the skill area, so we went after skilled players. This year, um, we knew that we were going to be rather small. We weren't sure if Heather was going to come back. We had to go out and get somebody with size. You know, uh, Emily would be that. But most of, mostly, we're just looking for good basketball players. Um, Brenna Robbins would be a great example. Uh, her AAU coach told me in the recruiting process that she'll never be your best player, but she's going to be a four-year player. Hmm. And she's somebody that we can put out the court, on the court 20 to 25 minutes a night and know exactly what we're going to get. And it's important to get those type of players, too. Looking ahead to this week, a couple of home games here at Willett Hall. Let's talk about those games, starting with UNC Asheville on Thursday night. A team that didn't win a conference game a year ago, but has already won two thus far in the early going. Much improved. Much improved. They, they uh, had a lot of players sitting out last year with injuries and other, other, um, other things, I guess. But uh, very talented group. Uh, Brenda does a great job down there. They played a lot of the same teams that we have, so we've seen them competing against similar teams. But uh, they're athletic, uh, they score the ball very well, uh, they're very well coached. And uh, as is the rest of the league, they're probably gonna come in here and play a zone. Well, and then another home game on Saturday against another team you had success against last season here at Willett Hall and Gardner-Webb. Hey, Gardner-Webb's leading the conference right now. They're four and one. They were the one team last year, and I know you and I talked about it. They were the one team last year that I didn't want to see in the Big South Conference tournament because they just had all the pieces in place. Rick Reeves does a terrific job, and they just looked like they were going to be a team that would be would peak right at the conference tournament. And uh, so now that's year. Excuse me, that team is a year older, and they're a year more experienced, and they could always rebound the basketball. So it'll be a tough challenge on Saturday. Talk about Gardner Webb's identity this year and how much your team is still deciding the role and identity really that they're going to have in the Big South. But where do you see things as, as you move forward? Was there, we talked about your goals at the outset of last season and where you envisioned your team getting to, obviously got to the conference championship game. What are your goals for this young team this year? Well, our, our goal is always to win the Big South tournament championship. That's everybody's goal. Uh, that hasn't changed from the beginning of the year. I think, um, you know, we talked about Gardner-Webb a minute ago. I think we're going to be the team this year that people might not want to play come tournament time because we're young, we're talented, we're just finding ourselves and we're getting everybody back. And I think by the time the tournament rolls around, we could be peaking and we could be a lot better than we are right now. Now, is that something that you try to communicate to your team or is that something more so that you're hoping they figure out on their own and the, pro the progression is more of an organic process? I, th I think the progression is more of an organic process. I, I haven't mentioned those goals. I, I've mentioned winning the Big South Conference Tournament. Um, but outside of how we get there, that's something that is organic. I think you're right. They have to realize and they have to fit themselves into the roles that they're accustomed to. And then as coaches, we have to try to put them in the best positions once they've established those roles. All right. Talking with head coach Bill Reinson here on the Coach's Corner. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Good luck on Thursday and Saturday both here in Farmville, and hopefully a, a couple of victories for your ladies. Thank you very much, Scott. Again, head coach Bill Reinson joining us here on the Coach's Corner here on LongwoodLancers.com. Join us each and every week throughout the 2013-14 season, again, right here on LongwoodLancers.com.